Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a radical equation with complex numbers. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist for basics of complex numbers. Now when you're solving equations with complex numbers, you got to be careful because you're dealing with complex numbers. How many times am I going to say complex numbers in this video? I don't know, but probably a lot. I'll be presenting two methods for this problem. This problem is particularly uh, interesting because I'll show you the results from Wolfram Alpha. We're going to be solving some equations. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So our first method uses substitution. Uh, because we have a radical, we can go ahead and call it something. How about W? Let's go ahead and call square root of ZW. And from here, we get z equals w squared. So when we solve for w, we're going to get a quadratic equation. And then once we find the values of w, we can square them to find z. Make sense? Okay, so we're going to have unique answers. But one thing to keep in mind is, never mind, I'll talk about it later. So I'm going to be using the completing the square method for solving this quadratic, the resulting quadratic. You can also use the quadratic formula if you're not familiar with this. But I would highly recommend that you learn this method because... It's very helpful, okay? So, if you plug in, like replace z with w squared and square root of z with w, you get the following equation, and this is quadratic, right? Here's what we're going to do. Look at the coefficient of w, actually the absolute value of the coefficient, right? It's negative 1, but you can think of it as 1. What's half of 1? 1 half. What is 1 half squared? 1 fourth. That is your magical number or mathematical number. Uh, add 1 fourth to both sides, this will become 5 fourths. Why did I add 1 fourth? Because that makes the left hand side a perfect square, and that's just perfect. This is an algebra concept solving quadratic equations using and uh, completing the square method, which is very, very important. Maybe we can talk about one day in a video, separate video, how to solve quadratic equations. I'm thinking about making a series of videos on solving you know, the certain types of equations, by the way, not on this channel, because this channel is completely dedicated to complex numbers, but on my other channel, which is cyber math. If in case you haven't known, you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check out my videos because I made a video, a bunch of videos on number theory, algebra, a little bit of geometry. I know I'm kind of guilty of that. So let's pick it up from here. Now we have this equation. How do we solve it, right? Once you write it as a perfect square, it's easy because all you have to do is uh, write the left-hand side as w minus 1 half squared. That shows you you did the right thing. Now, we're going to replace w minus 1 half with something. In other words, our goal is to find the square roots of 5 fourths minus 3i. How do you find square roots of complex numbers? There's a formula if you want to memorize it, or you can do this. You can just go ahead and replace this w minus 1 half with a plus pi and then this becomes and just solve for a and b a plus pi squared becomes 5 fourth minus 3i you don't need to do w equals a plus pi because then you're gonna have to deal with one half you don't want to now when you square this you're gonna get a squared minus b squared oh one thing i forgot to mention i squared is always negative one don't forget that that's the definition for our imaginary unit again look back on lecture notes or i mean lecture videos that I made because I go over all the basics. So i is also defined as the square root of negative 1, but why do we say the square root? Because complex numbers should have two square roots. That's another story. We'll talk about that. Plus 2abi. That's how you square a plus bi. Maybe memorize it. And then this equals 5 fourths minus 3i. Now, if two complex numbers are equal, then you can say the real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are equal. And from here, we get AB equals negative 3 halves. Now, this is a system which you can easily solve. It's quadratic. Uh, how can you solve it? There's a couple of ways to do it. Like you can square both sides here and then replace A squared with maybe B squared plus 5 fourths. And then from there, you're going to get a quartic, but that's going to be a biquadratic. And then replace... Anyways, it's a long story. I'm going to give you the solutions. Don't worry about it. It's too long. But from here, you get a equals 3 halves and b equals negative 1. And if you plug it in, you're going to see that it satisfies the equation. So this means w minus 1 half is, remember, this was equal to a plus bi, a plus bi. So 3 halves minus i. But 
The opposite of this number when squared also gives us the same result. So you kind of go with the plus minus, which gives you negative 3 halves plus i. From the first one, we get w equals 2 minus i. From the second one, we get w equals negative 1 plus i. Awesome. Why did we get two solutions? Because we solved a quadratic. But those are not the uh, goal. We are trying to solve for z. And remember, I told you z equals w squared. You're squaring z uh, you're squaring the w values to find the z values. So, one of the z values is going to be 2 minus i squared. That will be 3 minus 4i. And the other one, you can call the z1, z2 if you want. The, the other one is going to be negative 1 plus i squared. Here's how I look at it. I square 1 minus i, which is the same, which is negative 2i. You should memorize it because that comes up a lot. You'll see a bunch of videos that I made that uses this idea. Okay? So, there are two solutions. We're good. We can go home, right? Well, let's check it out. With radical equations, you've got to be very careful, super careful. With complex numbers, you've got to be doubly careful. So let's go ahead and plug these in to the original. For example, if z is equal to 3 minus 4i, and what is the square root of 3 minus 4i? It's 2 minus i. We know that, right? <laughs> because we just squared it. Come on. Oh, so it's going to become this, and that gives you 1 minus 3i. Yay, success. Beautiful. What about the second one? Uh, z is negative 2i and the square root of z is what 1 minus i okay why did i switch from negative 1 plus i to 1 minus i that's a good question right or what would happen if i use negative 1 plus i aha uh -huh. this would give you negative 1 negative 2i plus 1 minus i and that would be 1 minus 3i so that seems to satisfy the equation but here's the problem when i say the square root uh, it needs to be a certain number. You can't have two answers for the square root because square root of a real number is unique. And that's why we have the concept of principal square root of a complex number. Basically, when a complex number has two square roots, when it's non-zero, uh, we want the square root with a positive or non-negative real part. In other words, it's going to be here. But one of these is not included. I believe it's a negative pi over 2 or pi over 2, one of those. Anyways, you get the idea, it needs to be in this semicircle on the coordinate plane. So when we use this, if we use this, we get negative 2i minus 1 plus i, which is negative 1 minus i. That's not a solution. That's not a valid solution because it doesn't satisfy the original equation. And this has to do with principal square root. And also you're doing a radical equation. You know, radical equations may have extraneous solutions. Uh-oh negative 2i did not work. That's okay. So we got one solution, which is z equals 3 minus 4i. Good enough, right? All right, cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think second method is also pretty interesting. That's kind of like a more common method, but I like substitutions time to time. I want to use it. We're going to isolate the radical. So let's put the radical z on the right and bring everything else in to the left or to the left. And now we're going to square both sides. And of course, when you square this, maybe group these two together to make it easier. Or you can use i plus b plus c squared. This gives me z equals z squared minus 2z plus 1, which is z minus 1 quantity squared. And then minus 9, which is 3i squared. And then plus 2ab, 6i times z minus 1. Go ahead and arrange this. You're going to get a quadratic equation. And it's, I think, going to look like this at the end. And I could probably... Make it a minus sign, I think, to make it look a little more uh, standard. And then it looks like this, right? And this, uh, use the quadratic formula because factoring would be crazy. But from here, you get z equals negative 2i and z equals 3 minus 4i. Guess what? Negative 2i does not work. 3 minus 4i is the only solution that satisfies the original equation. We also verified with the first method, didn't we? Okay, let's go ahead and check Wolfram Alpha. Let's see if Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem. What do you think? Make a guess, and then, ta-da! Yes, Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem. Good job. The only complex solution is 3 minus 4i. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Make sure to check out CyberMath. And bye-bye.